Mm-hmm. Which is live. Mm-hmm. I, I see some mm-hmm. live going I on. I see the there. L. I see the L, or is it that way? I don't know. Man, I, it's, see, the, it's, I see the L. It's over there somewhere. I see the L. That means we live. Man, we it's live, so good man. to be back. We had some technical Ooh. difficulties you wouldn't believe Ooh. last night, y'all. Man, let me tell you, folks, if you're watching this, first of all, first hey, of all, first of all, we now interrupt your boring scrolling timeline of the coronavirus. <laughs> and we 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 come here, we interrupt your quarantine with the next episode of the Mad Men of Masculinity, baby. That's right. Yeah. I am Kirk M. Samuels. And I am Jason B. Kendrick, the Connection Catalyst. Ooh, and we are the Mad Men of Masculinity. That's right. We're just real men having a real conversation for you. Aren't you glad for, you're here? For you. For you. Right there. For you. For, for you. you. For you. Not for us. For you. We do this all the time anyway. <laughs> That's anyway how, this is how we talk. We, we always get some behind the yeah, scenes. Yeah, we do this all the time anyway. So we have some great conversation. But, uh, man, yesterday I had like a... I had a three hour like yeah. update on my computer, man. It was downloading all these people out here soaking up all the internet in my neighborhood, <laughs> you know, looking at all the quarantines and viruses and all that other kind of posting pictures at the grocery store and, and... and all that. Man, I my internet couldn't even download, man. And uh I had like a three hour download and in uh an update, man. We couldn't even broadcast. But that's all right, we back, uh, we back, we back. back. Yeah, we we're back. back. We're back. We're back. We, we make it work. Come back. We, we mad men and masculinity, baby. They can't keep us down. Not, keep not even down, a little baby. bit. Not you even a little man. bit. Hey, man, you got a roll of toilet paper I can borrow? Um, I got, I got some wet wipes. I've, I've right. been going, I've been going posh, man. I went wet wipes. I got some nice flushable wet wipes. It, it's hey, it's kind of nice. I got to tell well, you. When I'm done, I will give it back to you. Oh well, you can, have, you can have. Just give me the tube. You know, come. I'm making, I'm making arts and crafts. You back in the old days, man. They used to have newspaper back when they had outhouses and all. That oh kind of yeah, stuff. yeah. Oh yeah. You can use some newspaper, man. Oh newspaper, yeah, you can use a newspaper. You could do the crossword and then yeah. you know use it mm-hmm. the other way too. The news ain't nothing but crap anyway. Oh, uh, do I, uh, uh, see, you use it twice. Uh, you, uh, uh, yeah, there. Uh-huh. you know what I'm saying? Or I'm just gonna get a bidet. I'm gonna get a bidet, man. Man, I'm, those I'm, lit. A, I'm telling you. Is that not a good thing? No, I'm I'm down. I want to give me one of those automatic Japanese toilets where it's like all does it for you and everything. Yeah, I don't know if I want some water squirting up, you know. I don't know, man. I can tell you try it, man. I don't know, man. You just can't be wrong about everything. You be all wet, man. Then you mean then what you do? Then I don't know. And some sometimes I might need some extra pressure, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. You know, sometimes it's gonna need to anyhow, whatever. That's a whole yeah. other that's, that's a whole, a, that's another, a whole uh, episode right there. <laughs> hey man, speaking of episodes, man, what are we oh. talking about today, man? What are we talking about? We got well, yeah. Speaking of episodes, y'all are getting a double feature. You're getting Ooh. a bonus feature Ooh. because not only today are we talking about the new alpha male, mm-hmm. but by popular demand, because you requested it, we did an episode exclusively for YouTube about exclusively sex for YouTube. What, what? and male sexuality oh, because you ladies were asking for it. Man. Yeah, we did. Oh man. Ooh-wee. So if you, uh, I'm gonna add that uh, link right there in the chat. Did you put it's it in like, the chat? It's in the chat. It's right there. So that's I need, to share, I need to share this on my timeline, man. There, you haven't shared it, man. What you been doing? I know, man. I've been sitting there talking to you, man. See, I've what been talking. I've been, I've been sharing while we've been talking. I don't even know what's See, going on. That's the thing, man. See, I'm, I've been doing all the talking, and you've been doing all the sharing. <laughs> you ain't sharing nothing with me over here, man. How come it ain't? What you talking about? Oh, oh, there, there he goes. Yeah, you gotta hit that mute button. Yeah, I gotta hit that mute button, man. I gotta hit that mute button. Let me see if I can share this thing, man. Well, man, let me see what I can do, man. I'm just, I'm just all over the place, man. I'm just all the sharing now to public. How about that? There you sharing go. Now to public. I don't know if that works or not. All right, sharing on my timeline. What? What? There it is. You shared it. Yeah. I, oh, I see man. This. Oh, I'm all over the place now, man. We over here, oh, we over there. Oh, all right, now I'm back live. Now I'm back. All live. right, now I'm happy back Friday the thirteenth, y'all. Yeah, so I am Jason. I am in the house. Yeah, <laughs> Friday thirteenth. That's right. You that's know right. what I'm saying, man. Is that Friday thirteenth, Jason? <laughs> I see you did. 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 And somebody's just watching this. Hey, rewind back because we talked about. We did a little intro. We talked about what we were talking about today. But hey, re- recap that, man. What would, would you would you just got finished unpacking as far as we talking about here today? The bonus? Oh yeah. So we have not only are we talking about the new alpha male, which that is going to be deep. 
as mm -hmm. deep goes. Mm -hmm. But for those of you that asked for it, because it was a request. It was a request. We was a request. So you requested for it. So you asked for it. So we did it. We did the uh, Mad Men and Masculinity on Sex and Male Sexuality, which is on mm. YouTube. And the link is over there in the comments, right down over there. Down it's there, right over there, down there. Over there yeah. Wherever it is on your screen, you can Wherever see it. Is. Click on it. So, so we, we, we recorded this conversation. And when did we do that? Last week? I don't know. And what was yeah, it? It was, it was, like it was deep, an hour. We did a deep dive on men and sex. Yes. And we were real. And we were, I mean, it's not for the faint of heart. And if you're easily offended, you probably don't want to watch it. Um, but we got real and we started talking about sex. We started talking about what guys like, what guys need, the way guys think about sex in some very specific ways. We put it on YouTube because we were thinking that as real as we were going to get, Facebook might not even allow the conversation. Mm, probably so we got really real. So if you want to see the really real, 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 real deal, then you need to click on that, that link over there on YouTube. It, you know, we we just we just put it right over there because you know that's where it was a safe place to park it. So man, yeah. we talked about that. We we yeah. dug deep, man. We we got real on it. We spent an hour talking about y'all, and I, and I have sent it out. I have had some beta testers checking it out, and I have got nothing but positive re uh -oh. reviews. So mm -hmm. if you if you don't believe us, we got good reviews. So go Ooh. check it out and share it and review it and stuff. So now that we got this sex talk out of the way, yeah. We better get to tonight's episode because I know yeah. you got kid things to do. So yeah, 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 yeah. I'm gonna dig into the new alpha male because I was talking to my friend Brooke Alexandria, who is doing a lot of. Are you name dropping, man? Are you name I dropping? Name dropping because name she, dropping. She, she needs some props because of the work she's doing. So I'm mm -hmm. look up Brooke Alexandria, gentlemen. Uh -huh. If you don't want to work with men, and you want to work with an attractive female who will help, help you, you as a man. Why are you throw it out like that? I'm telling because yeah. sometimes guys we 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 got a short attention span and we need mm -hmm. something ahead. So yeah. um, we've had a lot we've had we've had a lot of females. We've had a, yeah. a few female women on here, man. And, oh yeah. I mean, you know, we don't operate in a vacuum. We, oh no, we, no. We, we partner with folks. But no, when we were I was talking to her, she was doing interviews for her new program and actually talking to men about their struggles and things. And all this stuff just came channeled through me. And I was like, oh that's deep. I gotta share this with Kirk. But the basic premise of it is, is the new alpha male looks nothing like the old alpha male. Well, what we, is the alpha male? Well, you look at the alpha male as we have this uh, definition of the alpha male as the jock, the uh, the the aggressive, the um, yeah, the, the the aggressive kind of jock thing. Mm -hmm. And nowadays, and of course, the way I look at alpha male is really the alpha male is the leader, the pioneer, the 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 game changer, the one who's breaking new ground, doing new things, and isn't following the pack. He's leading the pack or he's pushing the pack in that direction. And if you are a part of the old alpha male kind of version of the jock, the sports watcher, the sports bar guy who's just aggressive and kind of the jerk, you are not the alpha male anymore. You're not falling into the alpha male uh, criteria because you're just following the pack. The hmm. new alpha male is a man who's doing his work, hmm. who is getting heart centered, who is digging up his own traumas and things. You think so? I, I believe so because that is trailblazing. That is not following the norm, and that is mm -hmm. what is really changing the world right now. Is, I mean, it's the work you and I do. It's it's the mm -hmm. things that we're passionate about. Mm -hmm. And I'm not trying to say this because oh, what uh, that means I'm the new alpha male. No, this was just something that came to me, and it makes more sense that mm -hmm. going against the grain, being more heart centered, being more aware of your own emotions, being more present, mm -hmm. and not just following the pack and drinking a bunch of beer and watching football and basketball on TV, but actually being present and, and doing some work is the new alpha male is what, and there's studies. I even shared that study with you last night. There are mm -hmm. studies that show that the old alpha, except for the only thing about the alpha or the old type alpha that the ladies like is the confidence and, and the uh, purpose or passion. Mm -hmm. but they don't like the directness. They don't like, like the domineeringness. And so if you're, like us doing your work, digging in, in the trenches, and you are confident in yourself and you're digging that up and being more yourself and being more heart centered, you are the new alpha. Mm. And ladies look for the new alpha, mm. support the new alpha and, and show, tell him that he is the new alpha or that he is your hero. I mean, Kirk talked about that on the sex talk. Like you want, you want, you want your man to be smitten, get mm. his nose wide open, tell him he's your hero mm. often and frequently. Mm. Mm. But what do you think, Kurt? What? Do, how does that land for you? 
Man, I don't know. I'm kind of torn a little bit. I'm kind of torn a little bit because um, uh, on one hand, I kind of I see the shift in terms of what I don't know. I, I guess if we're using the term alpha alpha male, you know, the 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 dominant from a, a place of aggression, um, maybe kind of without. Uh, let's see. Somebody says there's a TED talk about this. Um, uh, thanks, well, um, but uh, you know, I, I guess the 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 notion that it's all about just aggression or just I don't know anger or output. I don't know. Maybe maybe I think it, it might not be so much external as it may be internal as far as what that challenge is or what that what the uh, the opponent is. As the opponent's not on the outside, it's on the inside. That being said, the reason I'm kind of, I don't know, about the way you presented that is because I, I, I almost think and I wonder, maybe there's some ladies out there watching or will watch this. And, you know, of course, we have a lot of ladies that, that do watch this and do provide us a lot of feedback. Put comments in there. Let us know what you think. But, um, um, and it, yeah, this is absolutely, all of this is our opinion. So you don't have to agree or, you know, you can feel free to chime in, but um, whoever's watching. Um, but in terms of in terms of my interactions with with women, I think that women today still um, I think they still value uh, a male that is assertive to a point, confident mm -hmm. to a point, leading to a point, uh, almost domineering, but not necessarily controlling, meaning I can step into a situation. I can provide guidance. I can provide direction. I can provide feedback. I can be straightforward and I can I can speak my mind. I'm not afraid. I'm living with purpose and all that kind of stuff. Um, I'm not passive, but not quite aggressive from the, um, you know, from the, like I said, the controlling perspective. Yeah. I, I, I do, ha I've had several conversations with women that like an assertive man, yeah. but not necessarily uh, domineering from a controlling perspective. Right. I've even talked to women and, and this is, you know, I was, I was uh, coaching someone actually in the, in, in context of, of, of her relationship um, where she wanted her man to be more literally to be more domineering, to be more dominant, but at the same time, not controlling in terms of wanting to own or control just her whole being, but in that area specifically wanted him to take more, more of a lead. And so, so yeah, I mean, I don't know. I, I kind of feel a little bit, a little bit conflicted. I, I just think the in the enemy or the adversary, the opponent is not on the outside as much as it used to be. Now it's on the inside and, and we have to reconcile that as men. Yeah. And I mean, uh, you basically kind of said the same thing I was saying in a different way, because it's the controlling and the domineering that is associated with the old alpha male that is no longer attractive to the feminine, but being assertive in a confident way, being assertive in a loving foundational way. And the only way you get that is digging in and, and knowing who you are, knowing what your purpose and passion is and being confident in that. Because, mm -hmm. yeah. As the masculine, we still need to be the leader. We still need to be to a point domineering or uh, have a sense of control so that she can be in her feminine. Mm -hmm. But the old, and, and this was always my experience, especially growing up in a military family, being in the military, a lot of that John Wayne kind of alpha male, you know, there's no heart. It's just all aggression and, and, and basically operating from anger. Mm -hmm. That is no longer in my opinion and, and and there's been studies i mean the study i showed you or the, the hour class showed you basically have 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 bled that out or ha mm -hmm. has shown the evidence that that is true and mm -hmm. and i think with all of the rebalancing that we're going through of mm -hmm. even realizing that as a man i'm not 100 masculine i have my feminine attributes mm -hmm. as a woman she's not 100 feminine she has her masculine attributes and we're all kind of in this balancing act and so the alpha and the beta and all the things, all these different things are changing, but being aware of that and not going, well, alpha male means this, you know, beta male means this. And what's really interesting, especially in that study that I showed you, and it makes total sense to me is like in some areas, we all get to be alpha. We all have our strengths. We all have our areas where we're, we are the alpha. And then at the same time, we have other areas where we are the beta. Mm -hmm. And they, you know, the example they use was the elite CEO, the Fortune 500 CEO, he's the alpha in his arena. Mm -hmm. But put him in a prison yard, and he's mm -hmm. definitely not going to be the alpha, and vice versa. Mm -hmm. You take the alpha out of the prison yard and put him in, you know, normal society or in a business world, and he's mm -hmm. not going to be the alpha. So mm -hmm. it's just redefining what does alpha mean because there's some, there's so much negative weight 
especially with nice guy syndrome and a lot of the men that I've done with men's work with around alphas. You know, we've mm-hmm. grown up looking at our father as the alpha or looking at these examples of what we consider the alpha, the John Wayne type, whatever, and knowing that we actually have emotions and we don't want to stuff it all down and mm-hmm. think, whoa, that means I'm not a man or I'm not an alpha. It means mm-hmm. I don't have those traits. You know, I, I'm not impressed anymore by guys who are big and strong and tough or mm-hmm. appearing on the outside. I'm not impressed anymore. I, I mean, I respect a Navy SEAL because of what they, you know, what they went through to wear that trident. And, and I respect that. Um, but I'm not impressed uh, by what I see on the outside in terms of people in general, but especially guys. I, I've been, you know, at this game of life long enough to, especially as a guy, and, and not only my life introspectively and retrospectively, but also um, and also uh, just from a perspective of watching other men to know that that battle that rages on the inside, man, that's the greatest hell week you can go through. You know, that's the that's the greatest boot camp. That's the greatest crucible experience that a man can can conquer is that inner thing inside of him that inner demon, that inner wound, that inner whatever it is. Yeah. You know, I, I look at a guy and I'm, you know, my, I, when I, I, I respect a guy that has confronted his father wound. Yeah. And has dealt with that. And, and I mean, whether dealt with that, meaning just confronting it. Mm-hmm. Now, whether it's completely resolved, that's probably a lifelong journey uh, for a lot of guys. But at the same time, accepting it to identify it and to face that thing, to come face to face with that, because that face to face, Face is quite often in a mirror. And so to me, you know, a mirror is more important than, a, uh, a, than, than I mean, the, the work in the mirror to me is, is just as, if not more important than the work in the gym oh, yeah. or, or the work, you know, the work in, in a, whatever, in a library or, yeah. or a classroom or the, or the work, you know, in a, in, in some kind of a, of a faith arena or whatever it is that that inner work man that's that's some like serious stuff right there man because you can't get away from that no and you bring up a good point because i mean having grown up military been in the military and been around those guys even mm-hmm. that's training with those guys the guys who actually have done the work i mean if you're talking seals or pjs or green berets or whatever majority of those guys who have done that work and what we would consider to be an alpha you know they are leaders. They they are they are these these strong, do, could be domineering types, are some of yeah. the nicest guys you will ever meet. They don't necessarily fall into that domineering jerk mm-hmm. kind of a hole mentality. They know they got their stuff, and you know, they, like, as you're famous as saying, they got their poop in a group. Yeah, they know their what what they can do, and it's that sort of like doing the mirror work. Once you know who you are, and you've got that that center for yourself. You, you, you've got that backbone, mm-hmm. you know who you are, you got that foundation. Yeah. Then it's not about being yeah. domineering. It's not about being controlling. It's not about being yeah. the strongest or whatever, because we all have our moments. Yeah. But allowing some flexibility into what we consider the alpha, the beta. Cause I mean, there are, there's so much stigma around that term of alpha and beta. Yeah. It's almost just like being, you know, strong or weak. Yeah. You know, as a masculine, the one thing you can't be is weak. Yeah. So that just translates, you can't be beta. But we're all alpha. We're all beta at different times. Yeah. And, and you know, then you get to the point where what what are you trying to prove? Is there nothing to prove, man? Long. That's a long one, man. <laughs> I mean, it's pretty long. <laughs> you um, got to read that out. Yeah, I'm going to read that thing. You know, I ain't good with reading anyway out loud. <laughs> but, um, good but man, that's, um, you know, uh, with. And I I have met several, you know, operators, some several, mm-hmm. you know, kind of high functioning, um, what would be considered alpha men or, or, you know, guys that are out there on the tip of the spear doing all kinds of stuff, whether it be, you know, special forces guys or, you know, guys that have achieved and accomplished a whole lot, you know, guys that have been very successful in business and financially and all that kind of stuff. And the, the common thing that I found in most of them is that they don't have anything to prove. Right. Like the secure, confident ones. I mean, the, the person, or this, in this case, the guy that, that is always trying to prove something with, you know, the stuff, the muscle, the, the, the car, the, the bling, the whatever it is, you know, the one that's trying to prove something is the most insecure. Yeah. But the, the one that's actually done the work, whether it be a SEAL, whether it be, 
you know, some uh, uh, a self millionaire, whatever. Yeah. The one that literally has done the work to achieve that thing, they're not trying to prove anything. Mm -hmm. They're not trying to, you know, they, they, you know, matter of fact, a lot of them, it's like when they get to that point, they say, you know, really the, the limelight and, and all the shine that comes with it is really kind of overrated. Yeah. And secondary to actually the accomplishment. Right. And, so and that, the journey is the destination. Yeah. And that, and that brings it right to the point of what I was hoping to get to with this video is that, ladies and gentlemen, if you're out there and you're meeting with men, if they are trying to prove, if they are, you know, doing the look at how big I am, look at all my muscles, look at all the stuff I have. Be aware of that. That might be a red flag that they haven't done their inner work and that they are very insecure. And as most of us know, being in relationship with those that are insecure usually doesn't go well. There's a lot yeah. of jealousy and, 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 and um, projection yeah. because of their insecurity. Yeah, I respect, I mean, just to that, I respect um, guys that, that are fit and guys that are in the gym, guys that do it for them because they want to feel good for themselves. They want to put in the work. They want to build muscle. They want to yeah. craft their body. They want to, that's their art. And they want to craft that and all that kind of stuff. I respect those guys tremendously. I know several of them. I mean, I respect the work that goes to put in. And like I said, the ones that I tend to respect the most are the ones that once they have it and once they do it, they're not. And, and even in what they do, they're not trying to prove anything like they're, it's all about just a, an expression of themselves and it's all about where they've been. And, you know, and when it comes down to it, man, you know, a guy like me, 47, four kids, a job, a career, passions, you know, books, all the stuff, all that kind of stuff. I just flat out, you know, yeah, I don't make it to the gym five, six days a week. I make it a few days a week and I, you know, I try to keep it nice. You know, you know, I want to, you know what I'm saying? I mean, there's, you know, I, I'm, I'm conscious of it, but, I'm, I don't think I'll ever be the gym rat. I just don't. I mean, that's not a priority of mine in terms of, you know, in terms of where I tend to spend most of my time. When we're done here, I got to go run kids around town yeah. and stuff like that. I mean, so, you know, I got to, you know, we're on here doing this. You know, we're we're preparing for, you know, the Denver Singles Summit Aha! next month. I mean, you know, we're we're doing all that kind of stuff, man. You know, you got your you got you got your thing coming up. Yep. you know, here in, in, in a few weeks and all that kind of stuff. And so, you know, Haley, never say never. Oh, I, Haley, don't tell me what that, I say never, 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 never. I mean, I mean, think she protests too much. I think she's uh, trying to nerve. I don't know, man. Whatever. <laughs> um, whatever, man. I'm like, you know, I'm, at this, Hey, I just had my birthday. I'm too old to be worried about what people say. Never say never. I say <laughs> never. I'll never be white. I'll never be a woman. I'll never make another baby. There's some nevers that will never happen. Um, well, I mean, there, there's possibility. I mean, if you uh, want to get crazy, let's get crazy. You can go for it. <laughs> <laughs> there are so minute. Look at Haley's laughing because she know her and I. <laughs> but there's some things that there's so minute possibility that I'm gonna go ahead and say never. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I, you know, I, there's a you know. But anyhow, point being. Um, you know, it's not, being, it, it, it's not, a, it's my, it's not my highest, yeah. uh, priority. And so people that prioritize those things and they accomplish those things. Now, you know, a lot of guys in the gym have never overcome some of the stuff I've overcome. Yeah. Okay. There's a lot of Navy SEALs that struggle with stuff that I've overcome. Yeah. So, you know, I, I'm, I'm good with that kind of balance. I'm good with the impact that I, that I have and the things that are my focus. So in terms of my alpha, my alpha doesn't come off as I walk into the room. I mean, right. sometimes I do walk into the room and, you know, and the temperature changes, you know, because that's just me. You know what I'm saying? I, you know, some people got more degrees than a thermometer, but they can't change the temperature in the room. You know what I'm right, saying? Right. I don't want to be a thermometer. I want to be a thermostat. But anyhow, mm -hmm. you know, but at the same time, you know, yeah, I mean, I, I just I tend to I tend to have my lane that I am, to your point, alpha in and yeah. I don't try to take nobody else's lane. And that's, I mean, and that's basically the point. Like the alpha of today is a trendsetter, is a leader in, in his specialty, in his purpose. He knows himself, he knows his purpose, and he's he's actively doing, taking steps to to fulfill that purpose. He he knows what his his priorities are. He has his one thing. Like you want to get all the way back to city slickers and you just have to have the one thing. Mm -hmm. He has one thing. He knows his one thing. He knows who he is. And so he may, he may look like 
the classical alpha. He may be big and strong and through the gym. He may not. He may be more the, the Bill Gates bookroom type, but mm -hmm. he knows his purpose. He knows who he is. And he's not out there being domineering, but he is confident. Yeah. He can't be controlling. He can't be uh, purpose driven. Mm -hmm. and so, gentlemen, as you're out there watching this, and I know many of you, and I've talked to many of you, and I know a lot of us have struggled with that that belief that because I don't f fulfill the old stereotype that I'm not a man or I'm not an alpha. I'm gonna tell you, if you know yourself, you have a purpose and you're you're actively working towards it, you are an alpha. Mm -hmm. Maybe a beta. Sometimes we all are. We all, you know, and that's that's really I think the sign of a true leader, the sign the sign of a true man is knowing mm -hmm. what is appropriate in this moment. Because mm -hmm. sometimes even in relationship, like it's it's really good for us men to take a step back and be the support and be the beta because mm -hmm. you know the woman's got got to handle. But then being able to step forward and be be the alpha again and take control. Mm -hmm. It's about being flexible, but knowing who you are, doing the work digging down and, and having that foundation of this is who I am. See, Haley's an alpha yeah. too. He knows. Sure. I mean, and, and you know, I, I am perfectly okay deferring to someone else in an appropriate moment. Exactly. And I, I, I'm okay not being in the spotlight. I'm okay not having the steer wheel all the time. I'm okay not being in charge. I'm not, I'm, I'm secure mm -hmm. in the things that I'm secure about. Yeah. Uh, and and like I said, a big red flag to me and a big red flag, I would think to a lot of people should be when you see and when it's obvious that someone is trying to become or trying to be something that they're not, when they're trying to pose and when they're they're trying to 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 front their whatever you want to call it, they're they're trying to put on, you know, put on a facade. I mean, to me that that's somebody being something that they're not and 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 to me, that's yeah. a huge red flag. You and I both know being speakers and being on stage, we jump on stage, we're the alpha. We got the room, we're 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 playing that role, we're fulfilling that function. And as soon as we get off stage, we want to let somebody else have it. Mm -hmm. and, well, you know, there's speaking of which, one of the things I love, and I've done this more and more and more lately, um, been asked to do it, is being an MC, yeah. right? And, and MCing an event. I mean, and, and you know, I've gotten tremendous feedback and all that kind of stuff. I just kind of stumbled into doing it. Um, but I love, I mean, that's like, if you want to see me, if you want to see a fish swim, me being an MC is it. I, I can, you know, I can grab the microphone and I can blah, 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 blah. But then I love the, I love just the gift of being able to bring someone else onto a warm stage. It's like, oh, we're going to warm this thing up. And I love bringing somebody else onto a warm stage, giving them the big hug, handing them the mic and getting off the stage. Right. And you're and, good at it. You got you're you're natural about it. I mean, that's the thing. If you need an MC, folks, if you got an event coming up, my man right here, and if you need a, a one that's not quite as good as him, but really good, <laughs> you can talk to me. Yeah. But my man, you I mean you talk about a fish can swim? You know, it's like that's that's your natural environment. You're good at it. And that's, but I, I think that's what we're talking about. I think yeah. the idea of you know, I can. I mean, the idea of being able to ebb and flow into the security and the comfort of who you are and your identity. But in order to be able to do that, you got to know who you are. Yeah. And in order to know who you are, you got to be able to do some of that mirror work and discover who you are. In in this world, man, and especially in our social media culture and in our Facebook and Instagram culture, we don't know who other people are because all we see is our curated lives. And sometimes we lose track of who we are because you know we're posting the best parts of us and, and all that kind of stuff. And it's like, man, you know, when you do that that inner work, man, you know, I think I think most of our work today needs to be inner because our outer is 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 seen for the world. Yeah. Yeah. And then that's that's where the true alpha comes from. That's where the true strength comes from. And, and you know, when, when you know yourself, you know what you're good yeah. at, then you're not offended by taking a step back. You don't. And I think that's one of the things that I noticed in my past and, and kind of gave me that the sour taste in my mouth with the, the traditional alpha was, you know, they always had to be in control. They always had to fulfill that function and there was never any get back. And then it's like, dude, you don't know what you're doing. Like it's time for you to step back. But they couldn't relent that because that was the, yeah. part of that security. But hey, can I offend some people? I would love you to offend some people. That's <laughs> All right. I'm going to offend some people here and, you know, I'm going to duck some tomatoes that are going to be thrown at the screen. Ooh, I'm going to duck over here. I'm going to get behind you. <laughs> <laughs> if you want to throw a tomato at me, do it now. I know. <laughs> um, but, uh, you know, one of the one of the examples of this that I see in social media is when people get into relationships and when they get into relationships, all of a sudden their timeline and their social media becomes 
all about the broadcasting of how great their relationship is and, and all that kind of stuff. And then, you know, see, I mean, <laughs> throw some tomatoes. Um, I have a, I, if and when, I mean, I mean, I, 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 I'm, I, I've kind of made that choice that, you know, I, I don't, I don't want to do that. I don't want to broadcast my personal or whatever. I want to be secure enough in my private to not make it public. Yeah. And, and to not have to, because sometimes I feel like some people just want to show the world, yeah. you know, hey, you know, somebody loves me or I'm in a relationship. Look at us. Look at us. Look at us. Look at us. This is the perfect person. Oh, look at him. Oh, look at her. And oh, she did. I mean, all that kind of stuff. And I'm just like, and then, you know, a couple of few months later, all of a sudden, quiet. Yeah. <laughs> you got I had really really an quiet. experience where I was with, uh, a, she was a beautiful young girl. And I mean, I realized we weren't really that good of a match after a while, but it was the same thing. We were living together mm -hmm. in the same house for several months at this point. And she said to me, can we put it on Facebook and make it official? And I was like, excuse me, mm -hmm. like having bills together and sharing a house doesn't make it official. Yeah, and so that became, and of course, that was a uh, a sore spot for me. I, I kept, I would bring that up and be like, "Oh, can we put it on Facebook and make it official?" Yeah, you know. Mm -hmm. But yeah, mm -hmm. I I totally agree. If you're secure, and yeah, I mean, there's nothing wrong with changing your status to 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 let people know and stuff. But yeah, I I always feel like same kind of you. Like if if that's all of a sudden you got in a relationship and it's all about how much you're in love and and showing the world that is that are you trying to make yourself feel better? Yeah. Do you really feel that you know secure in it, or is it? I mean, I don't know. Everybody's got their own thing, but that's been my. I got the same experience as you. Yeah. So I, I mean, like I said, to me that that's almost like a parallel kind of thing of of being secure in what you have that you don't need to. It doesn't have to be on display. Um, it doesn't have to be something that's broadcast. It doesn't. I mean, it's just it is who you. It is what it is, kind of thing. So, um, so yeah, man. I I think in terms of the alpha male, um, back to the. You know, yeah, back to the to the, in terms of the alpha male, man. I think um, you know, I think us as men, we have to begin and, and women, as you observe men that come into your life or that are in your life, as you observe, I think us as men, um, if we're not more focused or as focused on the you know, the the inner me enemy as the outer me enemy, then there's something wrong because most of us have some significant wounds we got enough to work on inside of us i got prop most of my problems are not on the outside <laughs> most of my problems and most of my solutions are in the mirror yeah most of my questions and answers are in the mirror and so most of us would do the world a whole lot of good if we just if we fix that on the inside and so as men that's something that that should be indicative as someone looks at us and as we look at each other yeah and and that brings up a great point too like I know I hear a lot of ladies saying they want to want to find a man who has done his work, who has already done these things. Mm -hmm. What you want to find is a man who is doing his work mm -hmm. because really, especially in our world, none of us has gotten out of childhood uh, unscathed. We all have mm -hmm. our trauma. Mm -hmm. And I know people want to throw around the word trauma bonding things, but really, if you're not aware of your partner's trauma, if you're not aware of the stuff that they're working on and you are both working on it together, that is the greatest cohesion that is the greatest glue that is the greatest thing because mm -hmm. a relationship is about trust and vulnerability mm -hmm. and if you're not expressing your vulnerability and your wounding to your partner and they're not expressing it to you then there really isn't any trust but once mm -hmm. you do that and mm -hmm. you're both vulnerable and you're both trusting each other like i'm opening my heart to you yeah. i know you, i know you're gonna love it and you're gonna be kind to it and you're not gonna yeah. you know abuse it yeah that's where that true bonding that's where that yeah. true intimacy comes in yeah. so Look for somebody doing his work. If they're like, oh, I did my work and I'm all good and I'm all this and that and I'm perfect. Warning. Yeah. That's like, yeah, because that's where the wound becomes a scar. And we talked about this where you don't want to offer somebody your wound. You want to offer them your scar. And so um, where, you know, you can you can have evidence like the scar on my forehead. I got evidence of when I ran into that trash dumpster. Yeah. Um, but at the same time, I'm not, I'm not actively bleeding all over anybody well, else. Yeah. And that brings up a good point too, because one of the reasons you want to be having these conversations with somebody you're in, you're in relationship with is because the more you talk about these things, especially the sensitive things, the more you yeah. talk about it, the less emotionally you attached to it. And that's what we want to get yeah. to a memory without the emotional attachment is wisdom. Yeah. And so we want to get to the wisdom portion of it. And we, and, and unfortunately, and guys, I know you hate this. 
you have to get vulnerable. You have to talk about what's going on inside you to get to that wisdom point. If you're just trying yeah. to step it down and ignore it, it's just going to come out sideways and, and yeah. cause all these the toxic masculinity and all these other things that that, that come from that. Got to yeah. be talking about it. Hey, I know everybody's on quarantine right now and got all the time in the world to watch this. And I know I know everybody's sitting around forever watching this. Um, well, we but, got a lot um, of videos and we got the hour long sex. We got, we got a, uh, speaking of which, man, let's recap that. What I mean, somebody that's just picking up now, man. What, what what's that whole sex thing you were talking about, man? So so we had some ladies, and I don't know who because you didn't tell me, but I know I believe you. Some Trouble. ladies actually asked they were that they wanted us talking about uh, sex and male sexuality and from a male's point of view, and so we did, and we spent an hour last week. And it's on YouTube. And actually, right now, I'm going to add the link back into the comment section so that you can click on it and watch it again. And uh, make sure you subscribe to the to that YouTube channel, to my YouTube channel, because all of these videos get posted on there. Mm -hmm. and so you can go back afterwards and watch them all. And yeah, you're on quarantine. We've got <laughs> we got content. I think we got like 16 videos, so you got you know plenty of stuff to watch. Wow. And, you know, so we got we got we got stuff there. I mean, we've got yeah. all the way back to the man speak for women thing which is yeah. like an hour and a half long that we did and all the mad men videos so yeah and we did that we did that on youtube because we didn't we wanted to get really real we wanted to get semi-graphic i mean we didn't get no we didn't, we didn't get we didn't, we didn't want to get appropriate it. but we wanted to get really real we wanted to you know we wanted to um we wanted to talk specifics and we wanted to get honest and we thought some of that would probably not go well with facebook's yeah. um uh you know use or whatever it is so if you're easily offended yeah if you're easily you offended you don't like want to watch that to adults so yeah if you are easily offended then yeah. this is adult talk we, we're talking like adults so yeah we, we got we got real we got we, we gave some tips too some tips yeah. for men and for women yeah. um uh, you know on, on our perspective and so uh hey tips you got something coming up in a couple of few weeks man yeah. what is it i do we do there's so much going on y'all so april 4th the Mr. Nice Guy and Superwoman Summit with me and Laura Cheadle. She's going to be my superwoman. At the Is that Don Cheadle's sister? I don't believe so. They're a little different complected. She has, she has a little different complexion. <laughs> yeah, I figured I would ask. You never know. I, 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 no, I got you. They might be distantly related. But yeah. April 4th at the Unity Temple in Denver, you can find on here. It's the Mr. Nice Guy and Superwoman Summit, myself and Laura Cheadle. And then uh, April 25th, for all of you singles and recently singles and newly singles, maybe want to be singles, we're doing the Denver Single Summit. Myself and Mr. Kirk M. Samuels will be speaking at that with like 11 others. I think there's like, we got like 12 or 13 speakers. Mm. It's going to be, it's going to be, it's going to be out the hooks. I know Joanna Shakti is doing the keynote and she's amazing. I've done some of her classes. Uh, you and I, and then Laura uh, Mintz, who's putting it on, and then uh Kara Donahue and then I'm not even sure who else is there but yeah there's a bunch of there's a bunch of folks man I, I'm pretty excited I haven't even really started to really 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 heavy PR that especially these days a lot of people last thing they're thinking about is going to some event um and that's kind of a no-no but but um but yeah I'm I'm planning on speaking I'm going to give the five deal breakers to getting married like the five the five things that like for men and women um like man, save yourself a whole lot of money and a whole lot of time and a whole lot of heartache. Five deal breakers, from my experience and and bunch of other people, the yeah. five deal breakers of getting married, like the no nos. Like uh -uh. And, and he would know he's had the practice. Oh, I got, <laughs> I, got the, I got the practice. I made it rain. Yeah. So, I'm so it, it, and for me, as a Denver Single Summit, I'll be talking about how to become a communication superstar within your relationships, mm -hmm. how to create that intimacy yeah. and connection that we're all desperate for, that we all want. And it all, it all starts with communication, folks. I'm sorry, you gonna have to talk to each other. Yeah, we wanted to be, we wanted to meet some folks, so we're hoping that folks show up. You know, I'm surprised at how cheap the the tickets yeah. are to get in there, man. That is, I mean, that's like ridiculous. I think it's early bird pricing right now, but yeah. man, it is so daggone cheap. It's, I mean, it is like ridiculously cheap. So I'm hoping to yeah, we're you, hoping you, to keep some folks out there. I think less than thirty yeah. bucks or whatever it is. Yeah, I think it is. You come come to the Mister Nice Guy Superwoman Summit. The tickets are only fifteen bucks. I think for the uh, uh, for the Denver Single Summit, it's only twenty five right now, and so, something like that. We'll, we'll add links in here. Check on uh, on the Mad mm -hmm. Men page. We've got links on there as well, so yeah. definitely check that out. And you know, we are here mm -hmm. to support you. We're so grateful for you supporting us. Please mm -hmm. like, comment, share. Thank you for all mm -hmm. the guys that watched tonight. Yeah, share this and, and, and yeah, share. It. Put some comments and all that kind of stuff. Hey, what if people want to get a hold of you, man? It's 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 usually pretty easy. You can watch these videos. You can go right over here to. There it is. My website, jasonbkendrick.com. Check me out on Facebook, on Instagram, uh, YouTube. 
Um, and you can call me 970-333-4616. If you need a coaching session, need a, if, if you were need a mediator or moderator in your current relationship, I'm happy to do that for you. If you want Reiki sessions, energy healings, intuitive healings, we, we I got, I, I got a mixed bag so I can help you all out. But you know, sometimes I, I'm busy, things happen. So my man over here, Kirk M. Samuels, if somebody want to get a hold of you and, and pick your brain and, and get your uh, wisdom, how can they find you? Right there, <laughs> KirkMSamuels.com. I do the slow scroll right there to KirkMSamuels.com. Um, on Facebook and all that kind of stuff. My number is 720-515-6536. Folks can uh, holler at your boy. Um, the Intimacy Incubator. I'm pretty down run excited to help folks. And like I said, lately, man, this is kind of a trip. I've been <clears throat> working with more women than men. Um, like women wanting help understanding men and understanding their man and all that kind of stuff. But but I, I, I am passionate about um, creating a uh, co-creating a world uh, of intimacy and unconditional connection for yeah. 1 million people. So I'm excited about doing that. So and that's a good point, gentlemen. You got to step your game up. The ladies yeah. leave me behind. They know what's up. They're, they were doing the work. And but there's a there's a but I tell you what, there's a lot of men doing a lot of work and yeah. there's a lot of women that are kind of falling a little bit behind as well. So ladies, you know, you might have some catching up to do. I mean, you know, there's there's some good guys out here. And if you keep if you keep meeting the same guy over and over again, I got to I got I got news for you. You know, yeah. there's one common denominator. <laughs> that one common denominator might be you. It might be your picker. Um, and so, you know, that, that's, that's why I'm, I'm passionate about helping men, helping and women. And I'm passionate about, you know, the, 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 the deal breaker talk that I'm talking about, but just maybe sometimes it's fixing our picker, you know, oh, what it, kind of things am I looking for? That's how I got into my work. If I got to be completely yeah. honest is after my last three relationships or four, yeah. I was like, Oh, Hey, guess who's the common denominator yeah. and all this yeah. mess. Uh -huh. and Boom. So been working on it and that's how I got here. So. <laughs> Starts All right, America. brother, man, I got stuff I got to do, man. Go get them kids, man. We love y'all. Okay. See all that there? See all that back there? All that, all that? That's that's yeah, my that's purpose right there, man. That, that's, that's my purpose, man. That, that's 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 my why. We'll go, um, go get that love, spread that love, yeah, and uh, man, we will see you on the flip side. Thank you, folks. Peace out. Bye.